Hello and seasons greetings to all of you from the team percentilers. This is Mayank Rath Singh bringing to you our next video for the solutions of CAT 2020 slot 2 arithmetic video number 2. Let's have a quick look at the first question of the video. You may want to pause the video, solve the question and then resume to see the solution and to match. You must have read the question by now and I hope you recognize that this is a question of Venn diagrams. Let me make a Venn diagram for you for better understanding. All right, so here is the diagram. So as the question says that every student is supposed to choose at least two subjects, which means that this region should be marked zero at all the places. People who have absolutely no idea of the basics of Venn diagram may want to skip this question because I cannot explain the most basic things over here for you. Uh, this is only a solution video. So, so please only the people who uh, know the very basics should continue. Otherwise, you can uh, move ahead forward the video and go to the next question. Okay, next 18 students opted for all the three subjects. So we have noted this, this and this also. Now the question is smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry as one of their subjects. This number, the bracket which is left empty as of now okay so if this is supposed to be minimum then i would want to adjust maximum number of people at this place because this place is the only place left out of the chemistry circle okay so as you can see that mathematics is chosen by 23 people out of whom 18 have been placed so the remaining five i will happily place over here so that these 23 who have chosen mathematics have all chosen physics and chemistry so mathematics is done now in the physics circle i have already placed 23 people two remaining and there is only one place remaining so i have to put them over here this is the best or worst whatever you may want to call it that i could do and this way i can see that the minimum number that could be there in the chemistry circle is 20 so 20 becomes the answer to the question this is pure reasoning guys in the name of mathematics, in the name of basics of math, it is pure reasoning. Okay, I had to minimize the number of chemistry guys, so I maximized the number of maths and physics. So, hope you understood this. This is the only solution and the crispiest solution that I had to offer to you guys. Alright, we are done with the first question, moving on to the second one. If you have read the question, you might recognize and if you don't, let me tell you that this is a question of application of time speed distance this is a special category question which i roughly call a formula question you know there is a particular formula so uh, let me just quickly revise the concept for you uh, if two people start together and then meet at a certain point now this person takes t time this person also takes t time to reach and after meeting the first person takes t1 time and the second person takes t2 time then there is a formula which says t1 t2 equal to t square now i'm not going to prove the formula right now you can check on our youtube channel for the basic videos in which these things are proved for your education so t1 t2 equal to t square and another thing so if uh, v1 was the speed of this person and v2 was the speed of this person then v1 over v2 is equal to square root of t2 over t1 now this is something which can be and will be used here very very easily okay ram and raheem ram took one minute and raheem took four minutes respectively after the meeting point as mentioned very clearly in the question okay so ram and raheem's speed is what we are asked two is to one so fourth option becomes the clear-cut answer to the question we are done with the second question as well let us move to third question yes this is a little challenging question a lot of people whom i know uh, did leave this question in the exam let me say that the minimum possible score be a the maximum possible score be b and sum of the remaining eight scores be s so this is how we are going to take this question on so when they say the mean of the lowest nine scores I'll have to take the minimum score and the sum of the remaining. Exclude the maximum basically. That would be 9 into 42. Okay. When they say the highest 9 scores, that would be B plus S and that would be 9 into 47. Now clearly if I try to simplify these two equations, I'll easily get B minus A to be equal to 9 into 5, 45. Now this is the basic arithmetic that we could do for the question. 
Now, uh, the reasoning part that comes into the picture is as follows. Now, they ask the, for the entire group of 10 students, the maximum possible average exceeds the minimum possible average. So, uh, basically, we have to find A plus S plus B by 10. Okay, it's minimum value and maximum value. Now, as you can see that we could not find the values of A and B, but we could just establish an equation between them. Now, you know that the since the average of the lowest nine scores is 42, the lowest score cannot be greater than 42. In the best possible case, this lowest score would be 42. That is the maximum possible case. And in that case, as you know, it is implied that B would be 87. And in the minimum possible case, A could be 0. And in that case, you know, B would be 45. Okay, but I, but we know that since the average of the highest 9 scores is 47, the highest score cannot be less than 47. So, I am going to take this as 47 and accordingly, this would be 2. Okay, so how can I find the mean that would be equal to, so A plus S we already know, 9 into 42, now plus B divided by 10. And here the mean would be 9 into 42. That is a constant. We cannot change it. And this would be 47. Now, if we subtract these two, the difference would be 40 by 10, hence 4. So third option becomes the answer. We had to find the difference between these two numbers. So basically, this minus this is what we had to do. So 9 into 42 by 10 is cancelled out. 87 minus 47 by 10 which is 40 by 10, 4 is the answer to the question. This is a good question because this part is actually special that seeks from you the understanding and not just merely the calculation aspect of the question. So this was a good, a great question according to me, in my opinion. So we are done with the third question, moving on to the next one. Pause the video, read the question, read the question carefully, I must tell you, and then maybe try and then resume the video. So guys, uh, before telling you anything else, I would want to tell you first the understanding of this additional 25% discount on the discounted price. So earlier there was a 20% discount. A lot of people understand that this would be 45% discount, but they would be highly mistaken and they would go wrong. Trust me when I tell you that there are many, many, many methods of doing this question using algebra, uh, using uh, PCG, technique from Arun Sharma's book or uh, using the multiplying factor method or uh, uh, you know using even allegation but I am not going to e even by using options but all of them are not the crispiest methods so I am going to solve this question for you by two methods and thereby to uh, tell you to make some point my first method would be starting with this point he gets a total of rupees 2112 that means the selling price is and this was at a profit of 10% which means the cost price of 12 would be 2112 divided by 1.1 which 19 which you get as 1920 okay this is cost price of 12 elements cost price of each would be 160 rupees okay this you have to understand on your own okay so if the profit is 10 percent a selling price would be 110 percent of cost price this you have to understand so this is one method so uh, cost price of all the articles together is 1920 and cost price of each is 160 we can find the marked price so marked price uh, they they say um, labeled with the same selling price that is nothing but the marked price m so let the marked price of all the elements or all the 12 toys would be m eight toys were sold at 20 percent discount that is 0.8 m 80 percent of m after 20 percent discount it remains 80 percent of m and four toys at 40 percent discount why 40 percent because already 20 percent discount was there so from 100 it became 80 and a further 25 percent on this now 25 percent is applicable on 80 and it leaves to 60 so 100 to 60 there is a 40 percent discount anyway so remaining four at 40 percent discount so 0.6 m and this leads to 2112 i guess i am going to uh, divide this entire equation by eight so I'll be left with 0.8m plus 0.3m will be equal to this. Basically, I can find m from here. 
as 2640 by 11 240 so you know cp of each article you know mp of each article so from 160 to 240 there is a 50 percent profit if no discounts were there his profit percentage would have been clearly 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 50 percent now alternatively what i would do alternatively i would first assume the marked price as 100 and i will hide this 2112 okay marked price 100 of each article now at 20% discount it would sell at 80 at 40% discount it was it will sell at 60 eight articles eight toys were sold at 80 rupees and four toys were sold at 40 rupees this would sum up to 640 and this would be 240 so the total selling price would become 880 rupees which is after 10% profit so from here i am going to find cp also as 800 clearly 800 to 880 is 10% profit so 800 becomes the cp so if 800 is the cp of each uh, uh, cp of 12 articles i can find the cp of each article to be 800 by 12 and there you go it is 200 by 3 now you know that cp is 200 by 3 and marked price is 100 that is 300 by 3 what is the ratio between cp and mp 2 is to 3 that's a 50 percent profit here also we get the answer as 50 percent because if there is no discount all the articles will be sold at marked price so it doesn't matter if you find the profit percentage of a dozen articles or just one article it will be the same 50 percent so in this method we learned that this number was redundant in the question it was not needed everything could be worked out just with percentage values only similarly this 12 toys also is kind of a redundant data only if we were told that two third of the articles were sold at 20 percent discount and the remaining one third at additional 25 percent discount is still you could uh, be able to find the answer as 50 percent hope i was able to make you understand the point moving on to the last question of the video for simple interest and compound interest okay so uh, again i would do this by two methods first method the algebraic method i do not know the principal amount that would be p okay so compound interest compound interest for two years would be equal to p into 1.05 square minus p because this is for amount and if you subtract the principal that becomes compound interest okay simple interest for three years at three percent would be um, 0.09 p that is nine percent of principal three percent per annum for three years is nine percent of principal now the subtraction of these two is one one two five for taking p common it is uh, one point one zero two five minus one minus point zero nine so from here you get P as 90,000 and that gives you your answer. This is what has been asked. Alternatively, alternatively, what you could do was to uh, consider principal on your own. Suppose the principal was 10,000 rupees. Okay. So compound interest for two years, what would happen at 5%? So first year, it would be 500 rupees on 10,000 second year it would be 500 plus 5 percent of the first year that is 25 so that comes out to be 1025 now simple interest for three years at three percent would simply be nine percent so that would be 900 rupees what is the difference between these two is 125 now this difference is going to tell us the answer so when the difference is 125 the principal was 10000 when the difference become 1125 the principal would be and that's where you get 90000 so this you did with the help of unitary method or ratio you may say and the previous one which looks like a smaller solution and it is that is with the help of algebra okay guys these are the two methods that i wanted to project for this question hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something new at least from the video so keep watching the space and thank you so very much for all your love and support and uh, please do mention in the 
comment section whatever you feel about our videos keep watching the space guys this is mayank rathsen signing off thank you so very much